Hey everyone, Shea Bear 1000 here. Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad. It's that time of year again. Today we're going to be fixing this 12 volt cooler I've got here. I just cleaned it up, washed it all out and everything. This is what we got to do. We got to put we got to put an end on this. So we're going to fix this. We'll explain something to you about this cooler here in just a second. Now this was her dad's cooler <laughs> uh, and you know of course when he passed away we got it so we've had it a couple years I've used it a couple times when I first tried it out I tried it out in the garage and uh, I left a bottle of water in there overnight and it froze and but I got a looking at this today and we've used it a couple times camping and I always thought it was weird that there wasn't a, a, a plug in it for ice, you know, after ice melts. And I thought, because normally, uh, just a regular cooler will have that in case you don't want to use the power. And then I got to looking at it today and I thought, well, that's a strange place for the Coleman mark. Usually they're right across here. So I pulled the lid off to clean it out real good. And, uh. I got to looking in here. What are these for? Oh, this is a daggone refrigerator. Cool. But anyway, we're going to put an end on it. And we're going to try to... We're going to see if this, this still works. Because um, I know it was out in the water for a while. It was outside. Because we just thought it was a regular cooler except for, you know, just a, like a heat sink. So I thought, you know, it's not a big deal. And it had water in it. And one time I had ice in it and it melted and it was full of water. So I don't know if the motor's still even any good or not or if it works. Like I said, I and, and another thing was there's really no handles. I thought it's peculiar. I never, it never dawned on me. That's a little refrigerator. So let's get it in the house and uh, let's try to put, put that end on here. I have an extra end and then we'll get it plugged into something and we'll let it run for a while I'll put a temperature thing inside there we'll let it run for a while see if it still works okay guys so I'm probably gonna have to solder these wires so I got my old soldering iron here and <clears throat> some cutting implements uh, wire strippers here these things are super old I did that Set my soldering gun on it one day or my soldering iron or something. Anyway, uh, okay, like first, there's a way you can tell. Well, actually, you can tell this thing's been kind of chewed up by an animal because it sat outside for a while. See, those are chew marks, probably a squirrel. Uh, we don't see many mice around here because we do have snakes. Um, how you can tell which one is... Uh, positive and which one's negative uh, this one is positive well you see the red on it but if that wasn't on there how can you tell well on one side there's a ribbed side I don't know if you can see them ribs on there or not see the ribs there's lines on the other side you either have some writing see the writing there's numbers and stuff on there or a white line or a white dotted line that'll be your power so anyway, let's open this up. Hopefully this will this one will work. If not, I have another one. This is just a, a car charging adapter that I don't use. I've never used it. I don't use these things because I had a a uh, <clears throat> IR light one time Someone that. Had one of these and I plugged it into the car and it got hot and melted my oil light so anyway so we took that screw out there's a little light here I'm not gonna worry about that light Let's see what's inside of here I was gonna say there should be a fuse there is a fuse in these so guys if you have one of these something like this that's not working sometimes not all the time but a lot of times there'll be an end on here you can screw off and check that fuse 
but you also have to wonder if it's a blown fuse what caused it right what caused it to blow um, let's see. this comes apart so I'm I don't know if this screws on or just pops on okay that just that one just pops on now I should be able to take it apart there we go um, there's the light so we've got the negative side is this the positive side will be the center so what I'm probably going to do I may leave the light on there I'm just going to unsolder it from here and unsolder it from there but in the meantime let's go ahead let's get this chew mark out of here I, I have checked the rest of the cord and it seems to be fine so let's cut that that part out of it that spot out make them about the same size I may have to put a bigger fuse in there I'm not sure I'll have to look and see what that is the fuse is good but I may have to put a bigger fuse in it uh, I'll probably do that anyway but so let's go ahead and trim these wires back Okay, I see it. <laughs> and I'm not going to go real far because I'm just pretty much just going to solder that onto there. So I need to get, don't lose that spring either. <laughs> so what I need to do is I have to get my uh, soldering iron hot. And also, I'm going to figure out how this goes. <laughs> so, anyway, let me get my soldering iron plugged in, let it get warmed up, and I'll tin it. And um, we'll go ahead. I'll keep this in, though. The end of this is still good. Then I'll go ahead and uh, get that soldered off of there. So, let me get this plugged in. Gotta pick that piece of rubber up off the floor. Then I'll be right back with you guys. Stick around. Okay, guys, so I can zoom you in a little bit, but again, the lighting's not that great here. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unsolder this. I'm not gonna leave the light in there. I don't need that light. So, when I plug it in, if the motor kicks on, it's working. If it don't, it's not. Cause there's no switch on that thing so all right now I want to solder to that bottom piece there move that for a second I say I know I say this every time but one of these days I'm going to get me a soldering station I'm going to try to tin these wires. I've already put uh, flux on them. This got some old paste there. It seems to work okay. Because these soldering irons, they, they heat up and then cool down. Heat up and then cool down so they can't overheat. But it takes them so long, especially these older ones. I got a brand new actual soldering gun in there that monkey bought for me for Christmas one year I have never used it still in the plastic we'll get it out sometime and check it out I think it's a Weller I'm not sure but when, when I was hitting around I needed a soldering station she just thought I meant a soldering gun <laughs> so they're like okay all right, now this is going to go, let's 
see, this goes like this. So I'm going to want to solder that. And it's going to come up through. I'm going to want to solder this one. Sorry, guys. Positive wire onto there. You get some helping hands, too. Uh, what that is, guys, it's not a joke. It's actually, they got little clamps and stuff. Um, I could probably make a set because I got some of those little clamps, those alligator clips or whatever. Um, I could probably make a set of them. Let's see if I can. There you go. Make sure I get the right one because. I did that once, if you guys remember, I put the wrong wire on. I forget what that was on. I know you guys can't see too much. But... Sometimes if you do that, it gets it hot again for a second. Plus, I'm using metal here, but I, I really have no choice <laughs> to hold this thing. Yeah, I think it's over a little bit too far. Maybe not. Let's just go ahead and fix it now. There we go, there's where I want it. Sorry guys. I made a thing to where I could put my camera right over, right over in front of me, but it's kinda, this camera here is kinda too heavy for it. Cause when I built it, I built it for Old Blue and Old Blue is a light camera. Okay, so there's that. Now, we're going to unsolder this piece. Like I said, I'll save this end. I can, you know, always use it. Well, I can save that light too, because I know the light works. Because I did plug it in to check it. Okay, let me get this tinned up. Right here on the corner. A bit of flux on there. There we go. Come on. Now we're going to put this wire on here. Well, let me see. I need to figure out a way to hold this up in the air like that. It's not going to work. To try to keep it away from that metal because that metal will take my heat away. Come on. <clears throat> so hopefully this will work all right. I mean, I could always put, you know, those gator clips on the end of here if I wanted and just put it onto a regular battery. You know, just clip it onto your battery in your car or truck. But our battery in the SUV is underneath the floorboard. Now, there is a place out under in the engine compartment that... Um, that you can use for if you have to, you know, get a jump start or you're giving someone a jump start. But I don't like using that. So I think. There we go. But the reason, but this, it has a power source in the back too. Like not a cigarette lighter, but you know, the power source, it looks like a cigarette lighter. Come on. It, um, it's got one of those in the back. 
you know, that you can plug in your charge, your phone charger, whatever. And being that the cooler is always out back there, wherever we're going to be, that would be, that's why I want to use this. Come on. I hate this soldering gun. Well, soldering iron, it's not a gun. That's not even getting hot enough to melt solder. <sighs> Let's see here. A new tip would probably help, but they still don't work that great brand new out of the box. Hi, right, let me get this hot warmed up first. Alright guys, so I thought I turned you on, but apparently I didn't hit the button hard enough. So there's that. So let's go ahead. Well, let me unplug this. And I'm going to move this out of the way. Because if not, I will burn myself or burn something else up. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these in here where they're supposed to be. Like that. And this. I can't see nothing. I'm sure you guys can't either. Can't remember if that went like that. I think it went like this. But I'm going to put it here like that. Now we're getting somewhere. Gotta make sure them nothing's touching here. Okay, doesn't look like it. We'll know once we plug it into something. <laughs> Twisting on me. screw back in here one side well usually one side's around and one side's octagon or whatever but this side is either or jeez this thing is fighting me all the way get out of there look at that this is crazy Well, that's strange. Put it in there with my fingers. Let's try this way. There we go. Man, that was a pain. back on there put our spring down inside there make sure it's springy Fish. now we're going to go outside with the tree lights kicked because all the outside lights kicked on too okay so Let's go outside and plug it in. I've got a battery um, outside that I hooked up just in case Monkey wasn't back in time. And I should probably try it with that anyway. <laughs> so I'm not, you know, blowing fuses in the truck. So let's go outside. Okay guys, so I used this when I was trying out my uh, FM transmitter. So let's plug this in.
I can't tell if the fan's turning on. Hang on, let me check this out. All right, guys. I just had a dirty connection there, but... I know you can't see it, but maybe you can hear it. She's running. Okay, now let me go get my thermometer. Oh yeah, I can feel that. And we'll, which way is this open? Okay. And we'll put it in here and we'll see how cold it gets. Okay, so there's the temperature. We've got our probe here. Uh, that's about what the temperature is inside the garage because I just took it out of the garage. So let's open this up. We're gonna put our probe inside there. Okay. All right, now it is, what time is it? Six sixteen. All right, let's come back in an hour. That's staying right about sixty five point three. So let's come back in an hour and see if that has worked. See if that drop that number drops. Okay, guys, we're at six thirty. So it's been fourteen minutes. Thirty-eight point three, thirty-eight point four. So it's dropping. Thirty-eight point two. And so yeah, once you get some stuff in there, you leave that thing plugged in on your way to the campground and while you're setting up stuff, this thing would be fine. There's thirty-eight degrees, thirty-seven, thirty-seven point nine. Alright, let's give it another say ten more minutes. And we'll see what it's at. Okay, guys. It's been about 10 minutes. It's hovering about 23 degrees. Now, remember, when you have that full of stuff, it's not going to freeze. Um, but like I said, I had, I did have a tube of water in there. Just a bottle of water, 16-ounce bottle of water one time. Overnight, it was over 24 hours, it did freeze. It didn't freeze solid, but it froze into some ice. So, if you got that full of pop, beer, or whatever, food, it's not going to freeze it at that, because it's going to take more to cool it off. But yeah, there you go. Yeah, we fixed it. It's working. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I don't think it'll get much colder than that. It might if I'd let it sit all night long without anything in it, but I know for a fact though that once that's full, you know, it's gonna take more to cool everything off. So, you know, you put your pop or beer in there. If it's already cold, it's just gonna stay cold. It's not gonna freeze like a six pack of pop overnight. It's not gonna freeze your food, but it will keep it cool. So there we go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to say Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Uh, Monkey's mom didn't get out of the hospital yesterday. But, um, because she put in, like, an appeal or whatever. And, but they denied it, so they're going to make her come home tomorrow. Or she might go into rehab, so. All right, guys. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Happy holidays, everyone. 21.7 now. Um. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Have a good one.